Hearts are flying around trying to figure out what's happening. And uh, I completely forgot about it, right? Like I, like, I did it. I didn't even tell people in my own band. Smart, smart move. Right? I didn't tell anybody, right? So they always said to me, hey, if you ever need, um, if you ever need a car, come see us. Right? So two years later, I finally go to Alma, <laughs> and, and Mike's sitting there, and Jamie was there, and I'm like, oh, my God. Hey, you know, oh, and then they're introducing me. This is Will from the band, the wedding. You were there, right? Oh, I was there. Then I remembered. I said, Hey, how'd you like the little bonus at the end? He goes, What's that? I'm like, Yeah, I was the guy with the fireworks. No, no, everybody, <laughs> everybody was talking about it. The club thought I did it. <laughs> what do you need for a truck? Ten thousand off. That's oh. hilarious. That's funny. Good family. So like. When, when the fit, like, there has been so many great moments. There's been a lot of weird moments, but it's a great time. Everybody's having a good time. I got three weddings. Ugh. My brother, my niece, and my wife's, my, my, my daughter's, my stepdaughter. That's going to be great. Bang, bang, bang. Wow. Newport, is in Rhode Island? Or? Yeah, you know what? Dragon, dragon, uh, dragon. Dragonfly Studios, Dragonfly Studios, yep. and they they rent it. They rent the place. They, the deal is you kind of like rent it for a couple of days, and there's like a cottage that they could stay in. But then you, really, you you have to build. You, you have to have bring in a tent. Yeah. Um, so you keep, there's not enough room in the building. It's yeah. just a tent. Yeah. You bring in the tent and it's overlooking the water. Oh. Yeah, it's just a friend of mine. And then my my niece is getting married at Fort Getty. Oh wow. So you know how you got yeah, you're in a you're in a shell of that fidelity. Did, did many of gigs inside that place? Yeah, my daughter had hers at Jay's Farm. Oh wow! Yeah, Jay's Farm. We had a, it was what a great time too. It was a beautiful wedding. Yeah. It was awesome, huh? When you're the band at weddings, man, like you yeah, can't. Yeah, band good. is the key. Well, yeah. 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 Band of, well, you, you, you spent like fifty thousand dollars on their weddings. You know, one had it at the uh, the uh, the uh, Riders Park. Yeah. They had one there. Yeah. The other one had it out in the Cape Cod. They had a, uh, a destination wedding. Fifty grand they spent. My daughter had on a Jay thing. She bought a new house. Yeah. <laughs> that was no, it. but you're right. The band is the key to a wedding. The band yeah. is the key to a wedding. I had a uh, wedding once where the girl called me three weeks before the wedding and said, yeah, we're canceling the band. I said, well, you're, you know, you're going to lose your spot. I get a letter a week later. She wants, so she wants, she wants to take me and Judge Judy. So don't worry, you're going to keep your money, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my money. But we just go on Judge Judy. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to go on Judge Judy. I look like an idiot because I don't want to give you your back. Go on Judge Judy. Yeah. The steamship authority. What's that? Oh, yeah. No. All right, I'm going to let you know that the school committee mm -hmm. has asked the city of Walt. I offer an A agreement for me to be the first one. Like when you guys get anything from the school committee. Okay. So I'm going to be. Oh, great. Here at Christine Dillon. Yeah, I'm the show. That's awesome. Perfect. She's awesome. You guys did a great job on the budget, by the way. I learned from Frankie and Troy. That's a pair, isn't it? Oh, they're a pair, all right. They're a pair. Frankie's working, though. At least as far as I know he is. I don't know.
I now call the order of the Town Council meeting of April 6, 2023. Mayor Clerk, call the roll. Councilman Greyhound? Here. Here. Councilor Arnold? Here. Councilor Worthy? Here. Would everybody please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Forum for agenda items. Anybody wishing to speak on an agenda? You can step to the microphone, state your name when called on. We don't have anyone on the list. We don't have anybody on the list. Anybody want to sign up real quick? All right. Consent items, discussion, interaction. Approval of town council minutes, regular meeting of March 16th, 2023, and special meeting of March 30th, 2023. Abatement of 2012 tax year receivables and 2011 tax sales. Fees. Pole Grant, Cooper Road, re uh, relocate pole number 71. If I can get a motion. I have a motion to approve the town council minutes of March 16th, 2023, and March 30th, 2023. Approve the abatement of the 2012 tax year receivables in the amount of $48,658,068. And 2011 tax sales fees in the amount of $189.83. And to approve the poll grant on Cooper Road to lo relocate poll number 71. I think we have to uh, change the amount of that first total. Okay. It's not 48 million, it's 48,000. Can you just hit that again? 48,000, $658.68. Take a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. passes. Unfinished business, boards and commissions, appointments, term to run concurrent with the town council discussion interaction, affordable housing advisory board, two year term to expire 12 24. There's five positions. Um, the clerk's office has contacted all the individuals at the talent bank list and sent responses to the planner and the council liaison. Um, I'm going to table this. Um, this is my liaison. I'm still going to um, have a conversation with all of the members uh, before this meeting is uh, is set forth. So I'd like to, if somebody can make a motion to table that for me. Make a motion to table the appointments of positions one, two, three, four, and five to the Affordable Housing Advisory Board. Any second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. ARPA funds review and or changes to allocate funds discussion interaction. The clerk has received the memo from Adam Messino, finance director, to honorable boss of town council, will worthy president from Adam Messino, finance director. Re American Rescue Plan funds reallocation date 4 6, 2023. The total unallocated balance of American Rescue Plan funding is 175,339, 3,085,615 awarded less. Uh, $2,910,276 in town council approved allocations. One project that I would recommend that the council re-examine and perhaps reallocate all portions of the previous allocated amount is Project 17, 190,983 fire departments, mobile repeaters. The council has previously allocated 190,983 to fund the purchase of mobile repeater equipments for the three fire departments in town. Fire departments are working with the police department in order to address the deficiencies in the radio system, which could take precedence over mobile repeater project. Additionally, the fire department will benefit from the project eight police station tower. It's uh, the fire department communication equipment that needs to go up in the tower, on the tower. DPW and police communication equipment do not need to be installed on the tower. In other words, DPW and police communication equipment could be installed on the roof of the police department for taking the tower and the maintenance that goes along with it all together. New priorities and or projects that the council might consider allocating funds towards in no particular order are. Project 15, Chapatcha Village Marketing Materials. This project has been in consideration since earlier this year and is essentially a branding initiative for the Chapatcha uh, Village. If approved, obvious work can begin on this project, 25,000. New ARPA project, police department. 
Number one, frontline police vehicle. Approval would offset the amount requested as part of the uh, FY24 budget board recommended capital budget, 55,000. New ARPA project, senior center, uh, couch recovering or new couches. Approval would offset the amount requested as part of the FY24 budget board recommended capital budget, 6,000. New ARPA uh, project, senior center storage shed for the senior center. Approval would offset the amount included in the budget board recommended FY24 budget board recommended capital budget 15,000. New ARPA project, Department of Public Works. The loader used by DPW staff is due to have its tires replaced. Approval would offset the expense included in the budget board recommended FY24 operating budget 20,000. New ARPA pro project, Department of Public Works. <coughs> Automatic generator for the DPW shop on Chestnut Hill. Approval would directly reduce the amount of FY24 <coughs> budget board recommended capital budget, 15,000. New ARPA project, DPW vehicles, the budget board, FY24 recommended capital budget included a four-wheel drive pickup truck, 60,000. A four-wheel drive pickup truck with a plow, 80,000. And a hood truck with a plow and sander, 125,000. For the Department of Public Works, allocating American Rescue Plan fund to any of all these trucks would directly reduce FY24 budget board recommended capital budget. End of memo. Discussion. Um, I'd like to talk about project 17, uh, which is the 190,000 for the fire department and the mobile repeaters. Um, I did speak with their board today. Um, they are meeting on Monday of next week with all of the uh, different towns. I mean, all of the different um, fire uh, Thank you. All, the board, the all, all the districts are getting together on Monday to discuss that and, and where it is. Um, you know, they, they know that, you know, there's some discussion about reallocating those funds. They're asking, at least for them, you know, to have that this meeting to give us an update. That's all the information I have on that. Didn't you say last meeting that, well, the chiefs, didn't they mention that they would have information by May? I thought they said by this meeting. But by this this meeting. meeting. I thought it was. I thought it was May or June. Yeah, that's what they said. Anyway, so, <clears throat> I mean, at least wait the, until then until they come back to us. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think the, the point of the boards, the boards are really the ones going to have to make decisions. Right, and I, I think I think the problem, from what I'm guessing with the information that I've heard, is uh, which which system they go with is a system the 800, and then there's fixing what they already have, and that's what they're trying. Yeah. They're working with Matt Floor to figure out, and another consultant. Also, I, I think to you, man, like a lot of these items here that'll reduce the budget coming forward, because I think we're at like 3.9 is what the ask is, Adam. Yes. You know, and anything to reduce that number, you know, for the, uh, the hearing, I'd like to see there. We have the money here to do it. These are one-time expenses. Specifically the, uh, the tires, if I could, Council, just to consider, because that's out of the operating budget. The lion's share of those requests are either new funding, the branding initiative, for instance, or items on the capital request. Yeah, other than the tires, everything and tires really should be in capital too, but um, all of these are in capital requests right now. The so that's not going to affect the, 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 uh, the amount of raised in taxes because it's already in capital. I, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's my notion, I, it's my thought to, to, to table these items and, and really see where, I mean, again, th these are capital requests. They're not coming out of the operational budget. And I think we really need to continue to refine that before the public hearing, before we decide what gets placed where. Um, and I, and I, I just, for the record, I, I'm, I am struggling with Project 17, which is, which is the fire department ask. Uh, I'm struggling with that. They have their own budgets. They set out their own tax bills, and I, I'd certainly like to see, um, you know, their their books in plain English. I, I don't know how we we have a, an emergency, that, you know, over a year ago, and we haven't seen anybody. And I understand they're working through it. However, we all got our fire tax bills too. So um, if this wasn't here, it. If this money wasn't here, it should have been plan four. So I'm happy to table that. Uh, that that that's my humble opinion. As far as the rest of these, again, it doesn't. It these are capital requests, which traditionally comes out of um, 
unrestricted fund balance, and I don't think it's going to affect the uh, impact the tax rate if, if some of these are. Um, I think the one that would affect you is probably blue zone, if, if it's IRS. IRS, yeah. But I, I right now, I'd like to do that with operations. Also, too, I could add to that uh, point if it, if the loader needs tires in July with the new budget, it stands to reason it probably needs them now. So if the, if the council makes that approval, then uh, we might save save some money on the purchase too. Or, you know, the tires are expensive, especially for a machine of that size. Yep. And, and I, I agree with you on the. Uh, Fire department, they do they do send their own tax bills out to us, mm -hmm. and so we're supplementing them here. You know, I know I know when they were up here, they said, well, the citizens have to pay it one way or the other. But you know, one way is through our you know our our budget, and our funds, and one's through theirs. So I think but it's important to see their books and see exactly how much they take in. Yep, I, I, I'm still fine with tabling it, but yeah, I'd like to see a little more information on it. Well, I think most of it's online. I agree with Steve at this point. We should be, you know, other than the tires, maybe, we should be tabling this to see where we are with the budget. And what we have. I make a motion to table Project 17, Project 15, uh, uh, the police department request, senior center request, two senior center requests, BPW. Uh, excuse me, uh, scratch that, uh, the uh, DPW request of the generator, uh, as well as the new vehicles. Take a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve $20,000 of these funds to go towards uh, uh, tires for the DPW. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Go ahead, Pat. Come on up. I just have one idea. Maybe you could throw, you know, five hundred thousand or two hundred thousand toward uh, road repair. Thank you. C, review of community solar program with power options, discussion, interaction. At the last meeting, Adam stated that he received the draft contract and had it shared with the town solicitor for review. Adam? Yes, uh, we need the council to table this once again. Apologies for the delay. We haven't been able to get our schedules to line up with uh, the gentleman from power options. We're working on that. Just want to have a meeting with the solicitor, the representative to iron out in detail so we can make a thorough presentation back to the council. Perfect. Thank you. Can I get a motion? Make a motion to table review of community solar program with power options. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Authorization of bid extension RFP 2016-02 fireworks discussion interaction. Adam again. This is essentially for uh, the fireworks display uh, coming up for Agents in Horrible Celebration. And um, the town had previously gone out to bid back in 2016 for this service. We maintain a relationship uh, with the vendor. The vendor is willing to extend uh, the terms of the agreement. Um, so uh, the recommendation to the council would be to uh, approve the bid extension uh, for the upcoming year. Okay. Do on the, uh, on the bid itself, this is the one that this also went up a little bit, right? Some money went towards I, uh, specifically for the fire uh, for the. I, I don't have that figure for you. Okay. I can, I can get it if it's if it's something we need to table tonight. We can certainly do that. Um, and I can get you that figure so we, you can put that into the motion. My apologies, I didn't I didn't I didn't look that up earlier today. So but I think the price of it did increase. Yep. It did increase because I remember the original bid was like fifteen thousand back back then, so it must have gone up. We, we broke up that paint. We broke it up over a couple of years. Got ARPA funds. Yeah, they got ARPA funds. Yes, it was ten thousand over three years for the parade committee. Right. We want to see that. 
well, time I mean, of the essence we, we, on this. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Yeah. Do they need I, to have an answer? I'm sorry, Tim. Yeah, I mean, is it going to cost us more if we're delaying? Is what I'm saying. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. But and I think we have the time to wait. I'll get you, I'll get you the accurate price, and we can we can meet in the summit. The next meeting at the earliest. Mr. Tableman? Yeah. Can we really make a motion? I'll make a motion to table the request for authorization of the extension RFP 2016-02 fireworks to the uh, to the next scheduled meeting. Was that April? Yeah, 20th. Yep. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. E. RLM DBA Village Shopness Hill Mobile Home Park request to forgive a Western RI Home Repair Mortgage Discussion Interaction. This motion was tabled in order to uh, try to obtain more information uh, regarding the request uh, for forgiveness uh, for this date. Um, Adam or David, do you want to have, do you have any update? Hey, um, nobody provided um, any other additional information besides what you did. Mm -hmm. I think the council, as I recall, removed the lien. Owner, and unless he submits some uh, it, some additional information for you to consider, the debt's still owed. Collectability is questionable. I made that clear to all of you uh, because of the fact that both the economic situation of the debtor and the fact that the value of the trailer that the debt was attached to is worthless. Worthless. So the collectability of that particular loan is 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 very stuck. Well, the way we continued, we thought that the gentleman might make, he sent the letter to the council, but he might come and make an additional pitch about what his economic conditions are. Did we contact him at all? You know, I'd be honest with the clerk who was, was out sick and I, I didn't hear anything. I don't know if she did or she didn't, and I, I certainly didn't. Um, I think, we, you know, the way we left it was we did not think there was much to be achieved there. I don't, I don't think you should. He's asking you to forgive it, and I think he needs to come here and give us more information. That's where we left. This isn't about the operators of the trailer park. This is about the owner of the trailer that's now worthless. Right. That's that's what this is about. Right. Just so we clear. The previous owner. Can, can we send a letter out to him? Yeah. We can ask him to come. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Removing the lien was one thing. I, I don't know if I have an, uh, an appetite for, for uh, uh, forgiveness of this whole debt. I, I don't know what that does in the future. But and again, collectability is a is an issue. However, what's the next one look like? Right. Well, collectability is the, it's kind of David's point in the community. It's if we're not going to, if there's really no chance of us getting. How much? How far do we want to go in, in time and effort and expense to see what we can get? So I get. I think that's our next step to see how far do we go. Right. So I think a letter is a good start. Yeah. Yep, I agree. And, and, and I just add, Mr. President, from the council, that you may recall that, that this program started. This morphed. This program morphed from a, a complete grant program to then a repayment program. Uh, it kind of evolved. I think at one point this particular person was never paying any payments on it. That's my understanding. Whereas most of the loans that are given out now require a monthly payment. And I and I could stand correct, but I recalled some discussions with the clerk on that, that the payments, you know, it started as a grant program at one point, then it morphed into a loan program. So it would be a revolving loan program. Never was imposed or never, never set that way. Just set as a, a loan repayment balloon, which I think is you know not the best way to go, obviously for this reason. There was no terms of repayment on that loan. No, that just saw. upon transfer. That's yeah. the problem, and that's that's a very difficult time to try to do it unless the unit is worth of any worth any value, and that's what's happened. That's why sometimes you get units transferred and you get your money. Because they have value. And there are other times you get, this is a very unusual one, this one was worthless. You had invested, a, my understanding is you put a roof on this trailer. Yep. That's my understanding, it was $15,000 to put a roof on the trailer. Going back, you know. In the 
was 2002 or? Yeah, that's what it was. Just so we're clear, 13, you know, many, many years ago. Okay. And we don't need a motion to send a letter? No, I'll, 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 I mean, the letter will pr be primarily asking him to uh, present additional information to justify his request. I'm not going to. Right. And that's it's it. not going to be a demand letter. It's going to be a letter asking you ask for forgiveness. The council wants more information. Uh, you need to provide it in writing or appear. Yeah. Okay. You need to make a motion for that letter. No. Go. No. I'll, All right. I'll send a letter. All right. We'll do that then. All right. New business boards and commissions resignations discussion interaction recreation commission position number two two year term to expire twelve twenty four the clerk has received the resignation of Jamie LaRose from the recreation commission. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion uh, to accept the resignation of Jamie LaRose from the Rec Commission with a with huge thank yous to huge. her and everything that she's she's done with that group. So appreciate her passion and her service. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. So appointments, discussion, interaction, recreation commission position number two, term to expire twelve twenty four. The chairs were recommended Lewis prior to the talent bank listing to fill the vacancy on the Recreation Commission. Can I get a motion? I, I've got a question. Sure. We had an app, uh, a recommendation, I believe, that came in just prior to Lou. I'm drawing a blank on the name here, but I got it in our order. packet. Yeah. And, and I believe, and believe in our notes that uh, Lou was informed that there wasn't two open positions or, or, or it would be, you know, up for consideration at the next open spot. I'm shuffling through here. I could be wrong. Do you have that yet? Yeah, do you? Sorry. That's who. That's who I was thinking of. So yeah, thank right. you for clearing that up. I just now there's a vacancy. got it. Thank you so thank much, you Chris. Okay. Fair enough. I'll make a motion to appoint Lewis Pryor to the Rec Recreation Commission position number two for a term to expire twelve twenty four. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Closer code of ordinance, proposed amendments, first reading, discussion, interaction. Council has proposed to add a retail sale of cannabis to the ordinance regulating land use and to add retail sale of cannabis by special permit in zone B2, highway commercial, and one, uh, one indus industrial in I, sorry. Uh, in the table use of regulations of the zoning ordinance, these documents have been forwarded to the council, reviewed by the solicitor. Uh, if council's ready, these documents can uh, be read or described in detail by the solicitor and then classified as a first reading. Solicitor Dave? Uh, the date's going to be May. You asked me the date or you asked me to talk about them? Uh, did, did you want to add anything? Um, no. Uh, as you know, uh, council and members of the council, uh, Mr. President, members of the council, there, there, was, there is a, um, the state law authorizes the council. We've had several workshops to establish and authorize the retail sales of cannabis on the Specific locations within town. Uh, during the workshops, you've identified several zones. I believe you've indicated several zones in B2 and a zone in the industrial. And those maps will be available at the public hearing for public consumption. And that relates to both one and two. Uh, item C uh, is actually a correction. That's why I want that. Uh, uh, there was a word that was included in the ordinance that was not allowed by the statute, so we're asking that, that's already an ordinance on your books, um, and, and to clarify it, the statute says that you could prohibit the, um, the um, vaping and smoking of cannabis. It did not authorize you to prohibit the consumption, and that was a point of discussion that was actually brought up, uh, and I, that's my mistake, I, I missed that word, so it's a matter of since we're doing So these three items, um, that's essentially the explanation of them. 
I think that's sufficient for first reading. The process is it would now get scheduled for a public hearing, which the clerk has told me May 18th. And then at that May 18th hearing, there'll be a public hearing, any other modifications, comments, concerns, plenty of time to make changes on that day or in the future. And then finally, you can have a second reading scheduled for that day, but that second reading and final passage can be continued uh, if the public comment generates some substantive changes that the council wants to make. Is that um, succinct enough? Yes. Yep. Okay. I think one thing that had the reason we're going through this process because that's the will of the people of Gloucester. They voted to uh, have that in town, so that's why we're going through this process. A lot of work is going into that, so I think it does a great job. All right, uh, let's see. Do we have one good motion? Just get yeah, both, both. Yeah. So let's get a motion, I guess, on the first part. Make a motion to declare first reading of three the proposed code of ordinance edition of chapter 350-7, special regulation section 58-1, cannabis edition of cannabis retail sales. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chapter 350, Zoning Attachment, Table of Use Regulations, Addition of Cannabis Land Use by Special Permit in Zone B2, Highway Commercial, and Zone I, uh, in Zone I Industrial. Um, let's see, that is going to be Chapter 154, Cannabis Use in Public Places. A motion for us, Mr. President, on the previous. Oh, okay. Okay, so I need a motion on that. Make a motion to declare first reading complete for the proposed code of ordinance edition of chapter 350 zoning attachment one, table of use regulations, edition of cannabis land use by special permit in zone B2, highway commercial, and one industrial. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, chapter 154, Cannabis Use in Public Places, Correction to C1. I get a motion. Make a motion to declare first reading complete for the proposed code of ordin ordinance, Chapter 154, Cannabis Use in Public Places, Correction to C1. Can I get a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Said public hearing dates discussion interaction chapter 350 7 special regulations section 58.1 cannabis edition of cannabis retail sales if first reading was completed the public hearing can be set for May 18, 2023 if council and solicitor agree. Can I get a motion? Motion to set a public hearing for May 18, 2023 for consideration of an amendment to the Gloucester Code of Ordinance chapter 350-7, Special Regulation Section 58-1, Cannabis Edition of Cannabis Retail Sales. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Chapter 350, Zoning Attachment 1, Table of Use of Regulations, Edition of Cannabis Land Use by Special Permit in Zone B2, Highway Commercial, and Zone I, Industrial, if first reading was completed. Can I get a motion? Motion to set a public hearing for May 18th, 2023 for the consideration of an amendment to the Gloucester Code of Ordinance, Chapter 350-7, Zoning Attachment 1, Table of Regulations, Addition of Cannabis Land Use by Special Permit in Zone B2, Highway, Commercial, and 1, Industrial. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Chapter 154, Cannabis Use in Public Places, Correction to C1. Take a motion. Yeah. We? I, Can we? What? Same I date? Yeah. Okay. And I just thought I had left it blank because it wasn't a zoning one. It technically could be earlier because of the advertising. Zoning requires more advertising and a planning recommendation. But it would make more sense to take 
Same day. Same day. Same day. Okay. I think I leave it up to you guys. Thanks. We don't need an extra. No. <laughs> I'll make a motion to set a public hearing for May 18th, 2023 for consideration of an amendment to the Gloucester Code of Ordinance, Chapter 154, Cannabis Use in Public Places, Correction to C. One. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Senior Center Picnic Pavilion. Incidental increase to funding for IFB 2022-07 discussion interaction. The clerk has received a memo, a memo from Karen Scott, town planner, to town council members from Karen Scott, town planner, date March 22, 2023. Re request to amend IFB 2022-07. The town received a place-making grant from Rhode Island Commerce Corporation for $150,000 to initiate phase two of improvements to Gloucester Memorial Park. These improvements include a covered picnic pavilion and parking improvements. I went out to bid for the pavilion structure on February 16, 2023. The town council approved the purchase of the pavilion for $113,075 from CoverWorks, the low bidder. After reviewing the preliminary engineering, the approval amount must be amended by $650. $450 was added to incorporate electrical access holes into the six center columns, and $200 is for the advanced shipping of the anchor bolts for the structure. To accommodate any other small changes, I'd like to have this approval as not to exceed $115,000, which is well within the $150,000 grant. This is a no-match grant and requires no cash contributions from the town. Can I get a motion? Make a motion to amend the approved amount of $113,075 to amount not to exceed $115,000. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. It's looking great over there. Everybody was enjoying it over the last couple of days. Request from the town uh, Gloucester Housing Authority to affiliate with the town of Gloucester for the purpose of obtaining health dental insurance, discussion and interaction. The clerk has received a memo from Adam Asino, Finance Director, to Gloucester Town Council, William Worthy, President, from Adam Asino, Finance Director, read Gloucester Housing Authority affiliation with the town for health dental coverage, date 0405, 2023. The town has received a request from the Gloucester Housing Authority, GHA, to affiliate with the Town of Gloucester for the purpose of obtaining health and dental coverage for two employees of the GHA. Affiliating would allow the GHA to be insured through the trust pools as an affiliate subgroup under the town. A group this small would not be able to stand on its own as a separately rated entity. The GHA is currently insured through the town for their property liability and workers' compensation. The Housing Authority would be billed directly have the benefits it chooses to offer in their own separate rates. Each year, both the town and the housing authority would share risk as the renewal would include the claims experience of both of the town and the housing authority enrollees. Other than that, they would be considered a separate entity for billing purposes and be responsible for their own payments to the trust. Representatives from the trust have confirmed that in other cities and towns there are a number of other very small entities similar to the GHA affiliated with their respective towns. Both entities would have to sign a very simple one-page affiliation agreement. Two immediate concerns arise at the prospect of the GHA affiliating with the town. Number one, setting precedent to where other entities in the town that meet the eligibility requirement to affiliate with the town submit their own request to affiliate for the purpose of purchasing medical and dental insurance. A, Rhode Island General Law 45-5-20.1b. The trust enabling statute defines eligible entities as any city, town, school committee, water, or fire district, or other per, uh, public or quasi-municipal authority agency or entity, or organization that is an instrument, uh, instrumentally of such cities or towns or any group of such cities or towns, authorities, agencies, or entities, which is a member of the corporations created pursuant to this section. Wow, Lori, you must have wrote that. Uh, number two, negative claims experience of the affiliated members negatively affecting the town's overall claims experience rating. In other words, if the members of the GHA have a significant number of claims for any reason, 
that negative experience can will impact the overall rating of the town, affecting renewal rates. The risk here is essentially the same as to when the town hires a new employee and that new employee elects to take health and dental insurance through the town and potentially add their dependents as well. Essentially, when an employee and their dependents are added to the town's insurance, we have no control over the experience, positive or negative. Respectively, Adam Luciano. Thank you for writing all of those big words. You're welcome. <laughs> I, um, yeah, do it. Adam, how did this come about? Received a NECO request council room meeting. This came through, uh, and it took took some time to ferret out all the details, as uh, uh, <coughs> President Weather just just rattled off. <laughs> Back and forth with the trust, um, and we had a lot of questions internally. And I think this started off as something that uh, the, the GHA thought we could approve administratively, and that's not the case. If, if this is going to happen, this would, this is something the council needs to approve. Their board has approved this concept. I think they've obtained pricing if this was to go forward. They, they completely understand that affiliation, yay or nay, falls with the council. Um, I have obtained a copy of that one page agreement. The trust did, did send me an, uh, an example. I requested that. I, I received it today. Um, that's it. Those are the other the updates I have. What kind of effect does this have on the budget? It, it's not going to affect our budget per se, meaning that. They're going to be completely responsible for the cash flow, making payments, interacting with the trust in, t uh, in terms of the type of coverage that they want. It's it's essentially the affiliation. They're jumping into our risk pool. Now, our risk pool is of the size to where two people coming in, even if their claims experience was extremely negative, really not going to have a, a substantial effect on our rates one way or the other. I suppose the concern is, as I tried to outline in the memo, is precedent right. to where other ent entities in town, the Rhode Island General Law specifically mentions uh, fire departments. Um, you know, they have employees too. I know they obtain their own insurance now, but perhaps they may think they get a more advantageous deal through the town. I don't, I don't know if that to be the case. I haven't studied that, but again, the precedent's there. Other entities may seek to do this. And now, if we add more of that type, should the council make that decision, then perhaps there's an effect if there's negative claims from a group that size, from the, the affiliate group, so to speak. They're not town employees though, correct? No, they're not town employees, but the fact that they are employees, uh, so to illustrate this further, not to pick on our friends in the land trust, but uh, they are a bona fide uh, board of commission of the town. However, there are no employees there, so they fail that test. But otherwise, if there were, we went to the GHA uh, here, that might, that might be a consideration. precedent concerns me here right I I just and again you know you add 20 people into a risk pool as opposed to two and there's negative claims I think all of a sudden it is impacting um, uh, it is impacting w what our financial responsibility would be it could uh, you know so also oh. like the uh, medical like if you do me if you do dental why can you add medical I, I don't like the precedent that was set either Council could ask to do that, right? Other towns do that, right? Yeah. yeah. Not that we can advocate for that. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, to that point, I mean, I think we're just traveling down just the road. I don't know that we. I don't know that we should be. I don't. Do we need a motion on this or? or well, it's, it's not a matter on the agenda tonight. It's just a, a memo. Okay. At some point, I think. Uh, question is, do you want to investigate how many other entities would qualify and what are those numbers and what kind of risk is associated? I, I mean, you even wanna, is my knee you jerk is, I don't know that, that, personally, I don't know that it's worth the time resources to even travel down that road. That's that's how I feel about this right now. I don't think that would change my mind I on agree. where I feel. And, and Adam, I, I don't believe we have anybody else any other type of arrangement like that with any other, correct? 
No, and I might have mentioned that. It's a great question. Yeah, you no. probably did, but I, I no, I didn't make sure. That's a great point. Uh, no, no other affiliation like this. Okay. So, so I just think that you should add an agenda right on. Chris, can we put that on the next one? Deny the request of the Glass House Authority to affiliate with the town of Glasgow for the purpose of obtaining health and dental insurance. Can I get a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Personnel uh, authorization, temporary fill in assistance, building zoning official discussion interaction. The clerk received a notice from the human resource consultant that the building official have not met with. We uh, are, are we're currently trying to figure out finances and, and logistics in this particular case. I would ask the council to table this until the next meeting. We'll have a, we'll have a better understanding of how it's going to operate. came on kind of sudden, so we're still scrambling to kind of figure out what we want to do and how the, the burden on the town, obviously we want to lessen the burden for the town, so there is money in our budget to take care of this, so I'm hoping that we could just, it's ju I think it's just a question now of agreeing on financial, financial. Okay. Can we get to, uh, make a motion? Make a motion to table authorization for Thank temporary fill-in assistance for the building zoning official. I got a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Senior Center appointment to the as needed interim director list discussion and interaction. The clerk received a memo from Melissa Bovier, Senior Center Director to the Honorable Town Council, 4 3 2023. I am requesting that our meal site coordinator, uh, Bethany Danielson, be included in the list of people who could act as interim director in my absence. I have started training her and she is catching on quickly. I'm requesting that she would receive a rate of $20 per hour while acting as interim director. She currently receives an hourly rate of $18 per hour while working as part-time meal site coordinator. This would be a $2 per hour difference, which is consistent with the differential for the others who are trained in both positions. Thank you for your consideration. Respectfully, Melissa Bouvier, can I get a motion? Make a motion to appoint Bethany Danielson to be included on the list of people who may act as interim director in the absence of the senior senate director at a rate of $20 an hour. Can I get a second? Second. second. All in favor? Well, aye. Well, aye. I have some oh. discussion. Okay. So, uh, Melissa. I mean, I don't see, I feel like three is enough, but to be prepared is a good thing. So, well, I mean, if two people went out with COVID, yeah. three people is a good thing. Yeah. That, that would be the only reason I'm thinking because, you know, if we have three people on our list already and none, none of them would be able to fill the, fill the position if, if, if you were out for Other than sickness, so yeah, it's just I mean they all have lives too, so yeah, yeah. So it's just more of an area. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right, we have a uh, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Use of funds for master plan for recreational areas, GMP Windsor discussion interaction. Steve, you wanna? So yeah, so. Uh, I put this on um, for multiple reasons. One involves uh, so, some of the ideas our rec director has. Uh, 
um, so, uh, and, and the other uh, uh, real reason is because this is going to put us in a far better position to obtain a grant um, moving forward if we actually have a master plan and not just asking haphazardly. Um, the, you know, it's my thought that if we, what we don't want to do over there is do something more than once. And with a and with a master plan, um, I think it's going to allow Karen uh, a lot more opportunities and leverage to to chase after some of those grants. So, um, Karen, do you want to comment on that? Sure, I'll just add. Um, we did a, a phase one master plan for GMP. Um, this is kind of the, the summary page of it. There's a lot more to it than this. But what it does is it looks at general a space, the elevations, the specific points, and you can figure out what exactly you have and what you can fit there. For example, I mean, with the basketball court and the playground, you can't just be like, yeah, I'll stick it there and I'll stick one. There's a lot that goes into the drainage and the elevations and their relationship to each other so that you don't put a basketball court and then it cracks the, you know, the next year. So um, with some of the stuff that's been going on proposed at GMP and some of the questions about Windsor, I think, which is the next kind of place to start looking to make some investment in, I thought maybe we could get ahead of it um, to look at doing something similar for both the rest of GMP and Windsor. So that I, I know there's been requests about um, pickleball and uh, BMX and ice rink and skate park, and just to really think where do you want all these things, where do you want them in relationship to each other, how will it work seasonally, so that maybe you have some things that are not all in season at once, you know, so kind of giving that big picture look to the, to the rest of GMP and Windsor. Just an idea, you know, um, it was pretty effective for this. And some of the other grants we were able to get from this is the $150,000 for the pavilion because we have it designed, shown, okay, oh look, this is our next phase, here it is. So um, it kind of leads right into it. So I think in anticipation of having another recreation grant round where we could you know, potentially be looking at half a million dollars to invest in our recreational resources coming most likely this fall. This seems timely to kind of <coughs> look at. And we think uh, we could, so it would be almost asking the folks who did the first, the first portion of the planning if they could work on part two of GMP and Windsor, because I think Windsor, we really need to, we gotta start somewhere here. Yeah, um, the way that we hired Beta the first time is that they are on the master price agreement for the state for engineering. So we gave them a scope of work and then um, we negotiated a price and then we felt comfortable with their price and then we went forward. If you don't feel comfortable with their price, you can go to someone else. But we have, I'm not saying that particularly, but it could be anyone with experience in recreation planning that we could go to and ask. Um, they've they've got to know a lot, quite a bit about GMP already, though. They do. Right? I mean, they'd be a good place to start yeah. for sure. <laughs> What was the uh, what was the cost for the uh, for that first round of planning? Uh, Eleven thousand dollars. Which it's not just this one piece of paper. There's a lot more that goes no. into it, and that no. I still wanted to. Site um, surveys you know. and everything. Yeah. So I guess my, my estimate, without having had any conversations about it, would probably be about twenty thousand dollars because we don't have any of that information for Windsor. Right. So there's a lot to think about of where exactly are our property corners? How much area do we have? What's covered? What needs to be replaced? So there's a lot that has to go into something like this to to make sure that all the pieces are going to fit together. Okay. Do, do you, is, is there a way to get a real, a hard number on this? Yeah, yeah. Sure, um, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if this is something you're interested in, I could for sure get a, I, a hard number on it. I think it's helping us big time. I mean, you uh, definitely, you know, love, when to, you think about what you could leverage. For opportunities. We need uh, to do something once, sir. Yeah. yeah. And we need to finish, absolutely. And, and like you said, there's another round of grant funding coming down the pike. If we, if, I mean, it would be my suggestion that if you could get a hard number from this group and then we can, that way we can do a no more than or okay. one of these things. And bring it into the next and, meeting. And I don't think two weeks, delaying two weeks of picking up the phone and calling to say we need you before the fall, that's not going to kill us. No, 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 no. Okay. That's Put on the agenda for next. Yeah, just before I went too far, I'm glad I just want to see. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank, okay. Thanks so much, Karen. All right. Town Council correspondence discussion. Council received correspondence from potential cannabis retail sales applicant. I've I've got nothing else to to, to comment on though. No. 
we're getting our ducks in a row here, so. I just wanted to add an agenda item to the Economic Development Commission to present for the next meeting. Um. All right, department heads. Anybody, department heads want to get up? Oh, Chief's coming up first. consist of all upper uh, level management um, of other police departments that are on the commission um, to review our standards and practices over the last three years. Um, we went through the mark today and we're scheduled for a, a, a final assessment in June, which is a, a positive thing for us, it's excellent. Um, Department of Corrections is coming up the third week of April, fourth week of April to come in and hit the state roads with a letter. So get it done during the uh, okay. Great, that's great news. Yeah. Everybody hear that? <laughs> That's okay. great. News. I know you asked, so we'll thank, try to thank you. Yeah. yeah, we'll hit 44, 44 in Gloucester. Yeah. So 44 in uh, one of them. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. John. John Lewis, Department of Human Services. Uh, we just had our uh, Easter fundraiser, and uh, went off. It went, was great. Cheryl was there, my liaison, Cheryl. Uh, she was there at the. Uh, at Dino's Market when we had the uh, the fundraiser. Also, we're having another one. Uh, now we get bank for me today. They want they want to have one on the 13th of May, which is a Saturday from uh, 12 to 3. So anybody wants to come to that one, want, there's no political thing involved. It's it's just the bank doing uh, doing an event for us. And uh, so any of you want to show up, it'd be uh, greatly appreciated. You know, uh, people would uh, I'm sure would appreciate. It. Also, uh, with the Easter thing we just did, I'd like to have a shout out to. Uh, Rose, Rose and Bob uh, Hogan, who are my volunteers. Also, Jim Shia, he's one of, one of my other volunteers who gave me a check for $350. He went half on the hands for the, for the Easter event. So he, he ponied up half, half the money for the, for the hands. So I just wanna you know, give a thumbs up to him and uh, I think he should be recognized for that. You know? uh, again, thank you, Cheryl. You were good to done it without you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Lots of, gen lots of generosity. Thanks, John. Board department heads. Good evening, Council. Uh, I have uh, I'm back in touch with the Department of Municipal Finance this afternoon, and uh, the assessor's office essentially we've got more firm numbers in terms of the statistical evaluation. Uh, now that you know notices have gone out to the public, and we we have better numbers that we weren't estimating uh, anymore. Uh, so I was able to resend to them the disclosure documents using the, you know, the, the budget that's been posted on the website. I have, haven't received the approval, but I expect it tomorrow to, to run an updated app. I could get that in the paper on Monday for publication, Thursday's Valley Breeze Observer. Um, looking, based on those updated numbers, uh, the tax rate is dropping uh, much lower than what was previously indicated in the first app. And the, and the reason for that is uh, I, know, I know the council's aware, but for those watching at home and, and those here, is at that time, in order to maintain the timeline uh, to go forward with our public hearing on the 18th, the referendum later on in May, uh, we, were, we were estimating. And, and uh, perhaps I was a bit too conservative, not the first time I've been accused of that, uh, with respect to that estimation. I erred too much on the side of, ca of caution. And as we know, we received uh, evaluation letters from uh, division government appraisal, and the growth in town is significant. So the tax rate will be adjusted accordingly. What is the tentative number now? So uh, I hesitate doing this, but uh, it will be plus or minus 20 cents. We'll be around $13 plus or minus 20 cents. So I'm still, we're still, you know, there's, there's hearings being conducted with vision. There'll be appeals. That, that, that number's going to move around, but we're, 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 we're getting closer to the tip. Thank you. So I, I feel confident enough saying that. That's good. So That's good news. I, I mean, moving in the real right direction and what was last published was 17 and a quarter. And That's correct. I, as much as I'd love to talk to all those people, again, that, that call, rightfully concerned. I, yeah. the, the, so the big question is, do we put out another uh, ad when we're not, 
I mean, certainly people are going to feel a lot more comfortable and sleep a lot better seeing a, a, a new number, but do we do that or do we wait one more? Do we, do, you know? I don't know if we can if it's already for the public hearing. Is that what you're talking about? I don't know if we can. No, for, for an advertisement with it's a projection for a thousand. It's just a communication. It's not an advertisement of the public hearing. Correct. Yeah. The public hearing is mentioned in the ad, Councilor. Uh, I just want to be clear on right. that. It, it, calls, it calls out specifically at the end of the, uh, this is the state required ad, that we're requ required to run this. So we've met that test, we've advertised in advance. So now we, we can say. We can, we can update it. Right. And, and so again, I've, I've sent that to the Division of Municipal Finance. They're reviewing it, given that they, they've already approved us once. They're just making, they're making sure that we're staying within the 4% cap. We, mi we might get more, I mean, if we do like that, the text, you know, than a paper ad. And, 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 and I, for that I end, we should be saying on another people, uh, like, yeah. If we're not going to pay attention. What's that? If, if you do too many of those, people just, it just becomes noise. Okay. I think that's good. And I, I'm fine with an ad. Yeah. Okay. I, I said you an ad. So I anticipate that approval tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get it over to the Valley Breeze on Monday. They go much Monday. happier. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I can. Appreciate everybody's understanding. You know, there's a lot of numbers moving around, so uh, certainly appreciate your patience. That's great news. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Thanks Adam. Adam. Thank you, Adam. Okay, any uh, council members have any questions for department members? I have one for Ken. Yeah, Ken, Ken, be, Ken gets disappointed if I have a question what? for him. <laughs> what do you got? So, uh, do we have any updates on West Gloucester with the situation up there with the. Uh, it's gravel. Yeah. Uh, they haven't returned. Um, company Swift Hill Pete um, was using space up there from the owner of the property. They haven't returned. Um, I was expecting them to get back in touch with me uh, to try and figure out some sort of a, a deal that they could um, remove what's there and still store their equipment there, but nobody's gotten back to me. The attorney was supposed to call me last week and he never did. So. Um, so how long did we wait? I don't know. Um, you know, <laughs> it's um, you know. In, in the meantime, we had another issue. Uh, Council President Worthy brought to my attention that there were complaints regarding the Colucci brothers out on Colucci. I was going to bring that up. Okay. Um, <coughs> they, have sent, they have been sent uh, a letter of cease and desist. They're not allowed to do what they're doing on that property. Uh, you know, it's kind of hidden from the road. I didn't know exactly what was going on until they started grinding rocks. And uh, they're basically doing, they're, they're mirroring what uh, Adler Brothers does on their, their, on their property. So however, what I did, huh? However. However, then they're doing it illegally. <coughs> so what we've done is we've sent them a letter notifying the owner and the company out there that they have to cease and desist any gravel operations. Um, and I directed them to go to the clerk's office if they would like to apply for a gravel permit. Um, gravel permit is a pretty tedious. Um, Can they even do that in that zone? They'd have, to, they'd have to go to zone and get a use, uh, and get some sort of use change over there, which I don't know how successful they would be at that. Um, but there are, I have to at least tell them when I cease and desist, look, if you want to do what you want to do over there, you're going to have to go through channels. Um, we just don't allow that to go on. You just don't park yourself in there and do what you want. So as they're made, they've been made aware that um, they have to stop the operation. Um, I'm sure I'll get a phone call on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, probably a high rate phone call, but it is what it is. Um, so what we have to do is they'll be, you know, if they come into the office, we'll explain to them the process of what they're going to have to go through. And this is also going to be a council thing, not just a zoning thing. You guys are the ones who issue. Uh, gravel permit licenses, so. Oh, they have to go through zoning first anyway. They would have to, before they even got where they want to go, um, they have to get approval process. on a zone change or, or a change of use, which is pretty difficult um, to do, especially for considering what's around them. Um, so we just have to wait and see. As far as the West Gloucester site, well, as soon as I know something, I'll let you guys know. I, I actually have some information on that because I spoke to the owner of that, well, who's buying that property. Um, he's, uh, that, that, uh, yeah, from did, did you request him uh, put some, uh, some planning? He's got to go to planning 
Yeah, I, I told him that there was a certain way that if he wanted to do what he wanted to do up there. Yep, he had um, to draw out what he wants to do with right, property. Right, that, he's, exactly. he's got that process going on right now. It's gotta be very specific to it. And it's gotta, you know, it's gotta go through David first. Yep. It's a legal document that they're gonna have to come up with David stating that in this over a certain period of time, the material that is there will be moved off site. So um, they good. have to agree to do that and not bring any more material on site. Maybe it would be good he communicated with Ken and our solicitor to let us know what's going on. Because yeah. you know, we have to act at some point because they're in violation. Well, somebody's in violation, it's well, not necessarily them, yeah, it's the owner uh, of the property. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, Darren knows the, knows the deal. So does his attorney. So, um, and these people over uh, the Coluches will also know the deal. We'll have Dr. Monday. So, uh, they'll probably come to see me. Probably. Um, They're in violation. So, violations, have, we, have we written Violations, a, violations. Have yeah. we sent a letter to, to, uh, to Darren to give No, him Darren was in my office. We had a meeting in my, in my conference room. Yep. Um, and we spelled out what Darren needed to do. Okay. And, but he, I, I, I guess. And, and Darren is. He's the president of uh, Springfield. He runs okay, Springfield. Okay. Yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's the point of contact. Let's put it that way. I, or his attorney. Um, but um, yeah, they know the deal. They know what they have to do. They've got to bring me something to show me what they want to do first. Yeah, that's why it's and important that you, sorry, you guys are involved. In exactly. This. They talk exactly. to you. Yes, exactly. And, and they and Mr. Iglesias, yes. So if they're if he so far is not getting back, do you send an email <laughs> or a letter? David? Um, David, I can contact you on Monday. Yeah, I mean, I'll shoot I you an email. The next thing would be to actually information. Yes. Um, you know, issue a letter reminding them of what you told them. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I I'd and rather do what I I'm going to have to put some of this on paper because that day in the conference room, nothing really was written down, and I got to get, I got to get that stuff done on paper so that we we know where we're going with this. And we need to be careful as council people in any discussions because this has happened in the past and cost the town a lot of money in legal fees. So we need to be really careful any discussions. That's why yes, we have our experts exactly. handling them. Exactly. Yeah. Anybody, yeah. Well, you know, we've been through this before, yeah. and uh, it was it wasn't a, it wasn't a good thing. I mean, uh, we ended up in court and every other thing. Um, so we're, gonna, we're certainly going to try and avoid that for sure. Thank you. But they're not just going to be able to operate the way. No, a letter yeah. going out, I think, is great. That's why you stay in touch. Council, any other questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, guys. <coughs> All right, boards of commissions. Anybody want to get up? Uh, Pat Henry, I'm here representing the Gloucester and Greenfield School Committee. So they asked me to take the place of Walter Steer, who used to come in. Yeah, a senior. Is it senior or junior? It's a junior. Yeah, I'm the third. You're the third. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little update about some of the Gloucester and Regional School Committee issues. So the first thing is um, the regional budget, school budget, was pretty much passed unanimously by the public at our public hearing. I think there were only 20 nays, and I don't know how many, I can't remember how many yays, 80 some or whatever. It wasn't attended large uh, in a huge way, but and you know the overall region came in at 1.92 percent increase, which being in an inflationary economy and um, the increase in a lot of people that joined the health benefits and added to it too. So let's say they were a single, now they're adding children or whatever. Um, I think the region did a phenomenal job in coming in at 1.92. Speaking about Gloucester, we still, as of last week, were working with Adam on our budget. Um, and it was at 2.64. And the other night at our meeting, um, we asked Adam to take another, he's been holding back 50,000, uh, being conservative uh, from state aid. And um, we asked him to take 25,000 from that that he's holding on to, to put it into the Gloucester budget in state aid line item. 
Um, and I thought that would bring us down to 2.50 instead of 2.64, which it did. So um, that seems a little bit better. Um, there might be some other things, but that's really where we are uh, with the Gloucester budget at this point in time, which will be eventually getting over to the council. Um, wish we could do better. There's not much fund balance for those of you that might not know that left in the Gloucester school budget. They're sitting with only $200,000. So to touch that, I think, would be reckless, in my opinion. It fits very, very well. Um, moving on to one other thing is the school committee has agreed to form uh, a subcommittee for us to review the school committee charter. Now, they did that several years ago, and I was the liaison to the school committee at that time, and they asked me to sit in on those subcommittee meetings. And unfortunately, those subcommittee meetings got hijacked, and it became a conversation for full regionalization. So when I brought this up the other night to reconvene and have a new subcommittee meeting uh, to review our school charter, it will not be hijacked to talk about future total re uh, regionalization. The purpose is for us to clean up any old matters in that school charter. But most importantly, it's for us to try to get to a point where we can change the charter to eliminate that swing that Foster and Gloucester go through in the budgeting process at the region every year. Where one year Gloucester gets a swing, which is what's happening this year, Gloucester's, even though the region budget came in at 1.92, Gloucester's getting a 2.50 increase because we're getting a swing and Foster's getting a negative two point something. A lot of other regional communities have figured out a way to eliminate that swing and they, they come up with a way to do it that's fair and accurate, accurate. And every five to seven years, they relook at it again to see if it needs to be adjusted. So we are gonna reform a subcommittee to do that. Um, we obviously would have to bring in finance people and legal people, because it's pretty involved, but we're gonna try and figure out a way uh, to clean that up. Um, and I think that's all I have. Any questions? Well, good, thank you, Pat. Great well, job, thank you, Pat. Brian McCarthy, the Seattle Medical Material Report. I just wanted to say thank you for the Add to Next Meetings agenda for what we're excited to represent our um, Mocking Trail Great. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Evening Council. Uh, Will Warren of the Gloucester Land Trust. So last month, as you remember, I presented on um, the dam and the notice of violation received um, from the DEM in mid-February. So I kind of gave you the rundown there just so you understood where we stood um, and promised you that I would come back post the DEM meeting to kind of recap what we learned there. So that meeting on March 29th was attended by myself, Dave DeCoste of the Gloucester Land Trust, Councilman Worthy, um, and Mr. Mosca of Emergency Management. Um, so I would describe the meeting with DEM as a productive three settlement conference. So this was kind of a, technically an informal meeting where we had the opportunity to understand the NOV in detail, see if we had any questions, um, and then also an opportunity for us to present to DEM so they understood kind of where we were in the process, action steps, next steps, that type of thing. Um, so as I said, I believe it was pretty productive. Um, the goal of DEM is not to kind of levy fines or issue enforcement. Their primary goal, which is understandable, is to make sure that the dam is remediated in a, an appropriate way. So really what DEM is looking to do is um, to enter a consent agreement, basically outlining, eliminate the NOV, outline what action take steps is the GLC going to take to kind of get the dam up to standard. We probably could have entered into a consent agreement uh, during that meeting or drafted one, um, but at the advice of our our attorney, what we, we did not take that opportunity because what we want to do is understand, we want to get the engineering inspection report for the, the spillway so we can understand like what is the engineer going to propose. So instead of agreeing to do whatever the engineer kind of dictates in the report, we're instead taking the opportunity to understand it so we know what we're agreeing to. Does 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so that's pretty much where we're at right now with EEM. They understood all the action steps that we're taking. There was some conversation about lowering water levels. Um, we, we resolved that. Um, essentially, we have another meeting coming up at the end of April where we'll continue the conversation. I don't expect us to have kind of a final consent agreement done because we won't have we won't have the engineering work for it. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to keep you guys apprised of exactly what happened and answer any questions that you have. Not necessarily a question, but I wanted to thank you for your detailed uh, presentation last time. Well, that made things very clear for me and I think for the public as well to understand what's going on and where you're going and what some steps you're taking. And I appreciate you taking the time to give us an update. I would just say if any any of you are interested at, in visiting the dam, just to kind of, I guess seeing is believing, right? So when we're talking about some of these aspects of the dam, just kind of seeing and discussing it in person is sometimes helpful. Um, it was helpful for me when I came on to the DLP, just to understand exactly uh, from an engineering report to like, this is what we're actually seeing and dealing with. So if any of you wanna. Um, I, I, just to add on to Walt, I totally think uh, you know, being part of that meeting and, and listening um, to the land trust explain um, really kind of, I think, cleared a lot of things as well. Uh, how are you making out with communication to our neighbors of the dams that kind of fall into our our pond? I know that it's kind of challenging with communication yeah. with who's letting out water, and that was part of the conversation. Did you get anywhere with that? Yeah, so that was part of the conversation with EEM, essentially feeding into Hoffman's Pond or other upstream dams and ponds. So, for instance, we were supposed to complete stump removal in October, um, but by the time October came around and we started to draw down and to do this work, um, the other ponds were releasing. So our lower level outlet that needs a control wasn't able to kind of keep up with the other ponds. So we had to essentially delay the work at least in half. Um, so David Ursulo, our attorney for the GLT, kind of put it on DEM to provide that information. We haven't received that information from DEM, but we've kind of done our own investigative work to understand who is upstream of us and to kind of establish those con contacts. <coughs> and I think at this point it's kind of a, this is who we think is upstream and who are the designated operators and what does DEM say are our placement ponds. So I think we'll get into a position there. I think it doesn't change the reality that Traditionally, or kind of customarily, dams of this nature typically draw down in winter, so they do some of their maintenance and repair work kind of like from October onward. Um, our lower level outlet is sized such that you know we simply won't be able to always keep up with the other dams releasing. We can try to coordinate, but they also have to keep on their schedules to lower going into winter. So I think our maintenance and repair schedule might be a little different than other dams, that we might have to act kind of like in the spring and the summer. So. Okay. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to uh, mention about the meeting with the DEM. And he was correct, I think it went well. Uh, I believe what he said about the consent or delaying it impression I received and also speaking with the head enforcement officer for DEM that they are like we said they're not there to enforce oh well they are there to enforce but they're not there to just to find people they're there to get the dam repaired and they understand that it could be a phased repair over a number of years so that's one thing that they're going to have to be working on as well, is to what these phases are. And so to go into a consent order too soon may give us some uh, phased dates that the trust maybe can't comply with, and we don't want to do that. And the EM seems to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And so once we do that, they, they they, I believe they were impressed with what has been done so far as well. So things are going along, I just wanted to. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anybody else? Yeah, I, I would like to um, acknowledge the hard work that uh, John Lutz and all the volunteers do at um, the food pantry. If you haven't been there and, and haven't seen um, how diligent they are at keeping those shelves stocked and how um, graciously they welcome all of the people who come in, um, I want to thank all of the um, residents that participate in their donations. Those, those shelves are always stocked, and we do provide some very substantial food to all of the residents that come in. Um, I also want to thank all of the shoppers that participated in our food drive on Sunday. Um, we had just baskets of food. And all of the donations that we were able to um, obtain, actually, um, we were able to feed 50 families uh, with complete Easter dinners, which included hams. And I want to express the gratitude of all of the um, people that we gave dinners to because um, they, from the bottom of their hearts, say thank you to all of you. Thank you. Great job. Thank Thanks, you. Charlie. Thanks, John. All right. Um, council now are going to move uh, to executive session. Can I get a open form? Open form. Oh, sorry, jumping ahead. Charette, and I'm sure you're well aware of what's going on with this rebound in town. You've probably got an awful lot of phone calls and a lot of headaches. The letter that I got advised me to call the association that did the rebound. I spoke to Liz Scundrio approximately for 15 minutes. I didn't get anywhere with her. The appraisal was not done by a site visit, nor was it done by a drive-by. It was done by what she says, a computer imagery. I've been in the construction industry all my life. I know what a computer imagery is. I questioned her, I says, you got that from the town, from the card record, building permits, etc." She said, yes. I said, okay. You have my site on your computer? She says, I do. So I told her, I asked her, what percentage did you apply by a computer imagery to my property to come up with that number? She says, oh, we took the retail sales of the surrounding areas up and down and we applied a percentage to it. And I told her, I said, look, there isn't a home in Gloucester that is the same from one to the other in separation by other properties in the middle. I said, you took it by what those homes were sold on the high side and on the low side. And that is not accurate. I said, how about the condition of the home? A ranch house to a ranch house with the same square footage. You did not do a physical inspection, nor did you do a drive-by. So therefore, you're telling me the home that sold for $500,000, which was probably two years old, versus the home that's 25 years old, and you attach the same square footage percentage to that home. You are not doing justice to the people in town, nor to the people who have the old home. And I was cut short, because she said, oh, I have two more calls to make. I've spoken to you for 15 minutes, Goodbye. Now these people got paid a pretty good amount of money from the town. 
I've been involved with the town, living here for 36 years, out of 26 years with the town. I was the chair of the planning board and I started with economics. So I know how this town works and I know how budget works. But yet, I got the cold shoulder. Now presently, you are dealing with a budget that if it goes with the same amount per thousand of last year, you're gonna have people screaming at you in your face. And besides that, I'll give credit to those that were here on a council last year and the town treasurer with the situation of FM Global. But yet the town municipal departments, wherever, took a cut. They had to cut in order to make things feasible. FM Global shortchanged the town over $700,000. Failure by the past council and those involved at FM Global, the old people aren't there no more. You have a new generation at FM Global. Nothing was ever discussed about that 20 year term of deduction in tax payment to the towns because they're doing business in town. And it fell through. That's why they didn't get all their money. But they did a pretty good job. But the town municipal departments took it on the chin a little bit. But the people in town also took it on the chin because of FM Global lack of holding their commitment of what they paid previous years. Oh, the contract fell through, it's all done. Now this year, the town's gonna take it on the chin again. And the possibility of that $700,000 or whatever it is, they didn't get no tax increase from what I understand, dealing with the town treasurer. But yet, the townspeople will take it on the chin. You can't keep doing this, because sooner or later, when the common folks are gone, you're gonna have only the elite and the elite will have to take it from one another, and you'll have nothing. Gloucester is growing. You look at the village. The stuff that you're seeing in the village we talked about when Walter was on a planning board. I'm happy to see it happen. It's moving forward. But I don't envy you people because you've got a hell of a headache in front of you. But you gotta make it work because if you don't have people in town, you don't have taxation, you're gonna end up with empty buildings, no one's gonna wanna come in and move into them because your tax rate is too high, it's costing too much to live in this town. Now, I've got a scenario here, I've been dealing with the town treasurer, right? Yes, sir. And we've been having some good discussions, factual discussions. And I've got a scenario here that I will be presenting to him. If he wants to send it to you privately, that will be his decision. But I will meet with him. I know bookkeeping, I know construction, I know how to figure out the square footage of a home without figuring the material piece by piece. I've been around a long time. I'm 80 years old. Some of you aren't even close to that. And the new way with those guys, there is no logic, common sense, understanding of its surroundings as to what is around you when it's being done. If he puts something in that computer and it's sent to you, how do you know he's factual? Or vice versa with any of you. And that's what's going on out there in this world. You believe everything that's on that thing when you see it. When you went to school, 
you've got a book, an English book, an arithmetic book, a science book, a biography book. And when you opened up that cover, there was a tag there. You're in school 1960. But there were all kinds of names prior with the year before. So therefore, you said to yourself, oh my God, it's been here for 25 years. It must be factual. Watch out. The shit that's in there is not factual. There are more lies, propaganda, and misinformation being put on these computers, smartphones, laptops, whatever. And people believe it. That's why we're in trouble today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Adam, actually, to, to one of George's points, I did have a question for you. I meant to ask it earlier. I apologize. Um, so, so when we received those letters, I received mine on a Friday, and they basically gave you one week to schedule a time. Has that been expanded? Because uh, I think, and I don't know how we express this to them, uh, acceptable in my opinion. Uh, it was a very condensed time frame, A, for people to sign up, B, it wasn't easy for them to sign up, and I know that slots filled up quickly. Has that been expanded at all, do you know? Yes, uh, they, they've, I've asked Vision, they confirmed that they would, they would be able to add as many sessions as needed. So if there's, if there's somebody that has not been able to make an appointment, for whatever reason, please reach out to me, okay. and, and I, I will square that away, away directly. The reason, if I can speak to the the what's the perceived shortened time frame of the of these appointments, it's not so much to try to rush through these; it's more to try to get as many in as possible. Again, because we're working toward a deadline certain, so we need to have these numbers wrapped up. So, if there's going to be a change as a result of this appeal process, right. prior to setting the tax rate, um, we want to we want to get that information out and deal with it and move on as soon as possible. There's still an option for taxpayers to appeal yeah. after the tax bills come out you go through that process the assessor's office so this is not the, the last stop should somebody not be able to appeal but again I mentioned earlier to the councilman Steeler's point if somebody's having an issue please reach out to me personally in my office in the office 568-6206 the phone number extension 5 to find us and, and we'll get that taken care of straight away the, the other part of it too is that um, I <laughs> totally lost it um, sorry no no that's alright it's how they treat people, you know. And in, in, in George's situation, it was, pro is, I, I can tell you, it's not isolated as far as, you know, they're not warm and fuzzy, let's put it that way. I'm happy they're, to bring that forward their to Their customer service yeah. is, is... That should be addressed. I understand that they're dealing with a lot of people, but there's no excuse. No, there's no excuse for being questions. abrupt, and, and, you know, people deserve yeah. answers to their questions ex yeah. explained calmly, coolly, and with respect and dignity. Uh, I mean, not, that's not my... I can't speak phone. for everybody else, but that's... Understood. Might as well. Yeah, I'll bring that message forward. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. It's been a long day. I Forgive was me. on your site today. Yes. I was looking with my recovery schedule on, and you did open it up for May, but May is the date you look. There's only one date that's available. So I don't know whether they could open up more dates. Yeah, I'll, I'll check in with that tomorrow. Thank right you. Now. That's great info. Yeah. conversation about the Smithfield Pete situation and the illegal dumping, I feel I have to say something about that. Um, I am the direct abutter next door to the property. Um, the property, it's really unfortunate for us. We did uh, originally own the property and sold it to the current owner, um, having a good rapport with him, so I feel like this whole situation is really unfortunate. But I wonder if any of you have been out to the site so you really have knowledge of exactly what's going on. I've driven by, but I haven't been up in there. So from the road, you can't see anything. And when you say illegal dumping, I'm not sure what your perception of that might be. But we're talking hundreds of truckloads of material that has been brought in. 
Now, my husband and I have recently built a brand new home right next door. And let me tell you, months of this has been torturous. Noise, beeping, sounds of machines, and all of this what I consider questionable material that has come from the Smithfield Pete site, where it's my understanding they are also storing mountains of toxic material on their property. So this is very concerning to me as the abutting property owner. I also own property on the lake. Um, you know, a conversation about this property might um, really open your eyes to how that lot, the former gravel bank, works. My dad used to own it and open, uh, operated the legal gravel bank on there for many years. Uh, there is a retention basin and a spillway that goes right across the street and into the lake. So I wonder what's happening with any of the runoff. I'm wondering if DEM has been contacted. And, and honestly, I'm completely frustrated in hearing that, well, it's just been a conversation with the guy. There's been nothing done and no action taken. Why? They came in, they dumped this stuff illegally, they didn't have a permit, they didn't ask any questions, they didn't ask permission. Why? And nothing has been done. So to me, that's not satisfactory. We can't just say, well, we're gonna wait and see what their plan is. No, what is the town's plan? Think about if you owned property in that area, what you would be thinking and your concerns might be for your property, for your well, for the lake, the school, the protected well that's on the restaurant in front, so I'm sorry, I don't mean to seem disrespectful, but some action has to be taken. You can't just wait and see what their plan is. The town has to have a plan and they need to take some action. We don't just allow illegal things to come into a town and just say, oh, well, let's wait and see what their plan is. So I really invite you to please go out there, look at what I'm talking about. This is not a spoonful of dirt. And is that dirt safe? And even if it is, what if is the long term of that material sitting there and leaching? There's a very high water table in the area. There's a lot of questions to ask. And I really feel upset that I have to get up here and do this because it's not my intention to hurt my neighbor or the property owner, but like I said, I've built a brand new house there. I have to look out for my interest and my other property, which is on the lake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I just want to address that, a little bit of that for you. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, you know, when, when those truckloads were coming in, a lot of phone calls obviously came to town, to town and uh, to Kenny and myself. Um, I think Kenny acted very quickly with uh, you know, basically putting that chain across the, and it, it probably happened for maybe a week prior before Kenny got there, but as soon as Kenny got involved. It happened uh, for months Okay, before. right. So, you know, I think the, the intention of, uh, of whoever was coming in there, obviously did not check with the town first to see, hey, this is what I wanna try to do. Um, that causes a problem, right? And uh, we see that too much. Too many people send, tend to I'll ask for forgiveness rather than permission. And I think that that's probably where we're at right now. Um, that's why, you know, when that person contacted me, um, I told him he's got to contact, obviously, uh, Kenny. You know, he's got to go through the right. Um, so he, he's, he's working with Kenny, has not heard anything. Anytime he calls me, I tell him again. He's, I'm not the middle guy, right? I'm 20% of everybody up here. Um, so I think that's why we said tonight, let's get a letter out back to him. Regardless of whatever he tells me, the communication has to be with, between him, Kenny, and our solicitor. So I hope with, uh, from what I've been told, there's been, there's nothing on that property, only been told, didn't do any samples, right? That this is just, Dirt. Who knows what that is, right? So I think 
by having the gentleman contact, you know, we send the letter out and have them, we're, we just need to keep on it. All right. If we need to, we can put this on the agenda for the next meeting to see if we have, we get any kind of reply from their attorney. So that way, you know, obviously residents here in Gloucester can know that something's being done. So far, I, I think, except for the months of it going on, right, when Kenny got involved, there's been some form of action. And I, I think it's on all of us up here to make sure that we hold accountability. Uh, so far, I feel like I feel like there has been communication, just for what I've been told. Anybody else for open? Anybody? All right. Council now needs to make a motion to convene to executive session. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to convene to close executive session pursuant to A R I G L 42-46-5. A2, collective bargaining, discussion, vote, or other action by town council. Thank you. All in favor? Oh, we're going to poll the council. Councilor Graham? Present. Councilor Keir? Aye. Councilor Burlingame? Aye. Councilor Arnold? Aye. Councilor Worthy? Aye. Quick five minutes. All right. 907. We've done